The topic we're looking today is uh, trying to see why that a perfect competition will always end up in what we call the long run equilibrium. Now, with this, remember that we're talking about the firm, the individual firm shown on the right, being a much smaller piece of the overall industry, which we see on the left. And remember, QSTAR is much, much, much bigger than QPM. So, effects here, or changes here, don't have an effect here because this is too small compared to that. Remember, we're talking about, for supply and demand, we're talking about almost limitless, almost infinite uh, suppliers and demanders of this product. But, even though this won't have an effect here, anything that happens here will have an effect back over here. So let's start with what we've got here. We've got, uh, we're, we're assuming that the firm is profit maximizing, so we see that they're producing where MC is equal to MR, and at that position, their average revenue is much higher than their average cost. So this yellow area that I've shown here is an area of abnormal profit. Well, the thing about abnormal profit is, yeah, I like my normal profit, I like to be satisfied, but I like more than that a lot. So, abnormal profit is going to attract new firms to the industry. Remember, part of our model of uh, perfect competition is that barriers to entry are very few, if any at all. The point is that the barriers to entry don't keep firms from joining the industry. It's easy to join the industry. So the effect of that will be if lots of new firms, remember not one or two, but many people will be looking at this abnormal profit saying, yeah, I want me some of that. If that starts to happen, what we'll see is the supply is gonna move further and further and further to the right. Okay, so the first thing we notice is that as supply two, uh, or supply moves to the right, what we see is that the price is gonna fall, which means because these guys are price takers, well, what that means is that they're gonna have to take the new price that the industry sets. So what we'll see is that because they're taking this new price, then this is going to be their new, uh, their new marginal revenue and average revenue curve which means that MC now intersects MR, the new line, the new MR, at a point that's further to the left and below the original one. So let's look at this position here. So QPM has moved to the left, P star has fallen, this Q star has increased, and what we have here is that this firm is no longer making as much abnormal profit as they have. So this whole area in here and this as well is going to be eliminated. So they're left only making this amount of abnormal profit, but it's still more than what they need to stay in business. So this is going to continue to attract new firms and will continue to see supply shift further and further to the right. So this will continue to happen until the, the industry has shifted far enough to the right that the price that's being set is found right at that position. So this is going to be our new, and we can see that at this position, the point of profit maximization here is equal to the lowest point of average cost. So at this point, average revenue and average cost are equal to each other, and they end up in what we call the break-even position. So to recap, what's happened is that because of the abnormal profit, more and more firms are attracted to the industry, shifting the supply curve further and further to the right, and as long as there's abnormal profit, that will continue to happen. Now that goes away once there's no more abnormal profit, there's no reason for new firms to be attracted to the industry. Keep in mind this is possible because of the low barriers to entry in perfect competition. In this situation, where the firm is operating at QPM, but average costs are higher than average revenue, well, then they're going to be making a loss. So here, the exact opposite is true. The loss is going to force some firms, not all of them, remember, this is one firm. There would be thousands of firms with the exact same diagram. But some firms are going to leave the industry. 
The result of that, of course, is supply is going to shift to the left. That new price is going to be given to the given to the firms, and what's what we're going to see is that the price that that firms uh, face is going to go up and up and up. So as that occurs, as this goes up, we're going to see these losses be eliminated. They're going to be gone. So. As it goes up, we notice that we're going up the marginal cost curve because it has a positive slope. So that's going to cause QPM to move to the right. It's going to be QPM2. Obviously, the price that they get is going to go up. Here, we're going to see the price go up. And consequently, the quantity demanded and the quantity in the market go down. So again, as long as there's a loss, it's going to continue to make firms leave. That's going to continue to make supply shift to the left, which is going to continue to make the firm, uh, the price the firm receives go up, eliminating some of those losses. Once those losses go away, there's no reason for this to continue working or to continue happening. So ultimately what we see is that in the short run, yeah, you can lose money like what we were showing here or you could have abnormal profit like we showed on a previous whiteboard, but that abnormal profit or loss is going to affect the supply curve in the industry until that abnormal profit or loss is eliminated. So in long run equilibrium, which is what we find when the firm is producing where QPM is equal to the lowest point of AC, what we find are some interesting effects on efficiency. And that's going to be the topic of the next video, so pay attention to that. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below.